Welcome back to the Cock a Doodle Screw Channel. Today I'm doing the very beginning steps with converting this old trailer frame uh, into a mobile chicken coop for the pasture that's behind me. You see that? Yep, we're gonna take our chickens out and about and add to our flock. Want to raise a lot of laying birds and um, do it in the mobile chicken coop style. So anyway, this is the beginning of the project and we'll take you along for the ride. Thanks for watching. <laughs> yeah, so behind me is the trailer frame, and I have laid on it some landscape timbers that I already have. <laughs> no, we're just gonna sit right there. My hair is crazy. Uh, I've been working on the chicken coop frame here. I wanted this frame to sit up a little bit higher, and so. As you can see on this one I've already done so we're gonna raise this up four inches and uh, I think that's gonna put the the overall deck height of this coop around 20 inches which I think is gonna be nice for the chickens to be able to go underneath back working on the chicken coop this afternoon and one of the things that was bothering me overnight was about the positioning of the axle in relation to the, the front and back distance of the, of the trailer frame. And what my plan is to, is to make a uh, platform so the kids can stand possibly on the very back of this coop and gather eggs. And so one of the issues was that the trailer frame came with a very centered axle. Well, I'm, I moved the axle back in order to give uh, more tongue weight so therefore the three points that touch the ground the, the two tires and the tongue uh, jack area would be more stable and so I'm looking to be able to to have the kids be around this or climb on it and it really be safe and stable and not tipping backwards on itself all right so this morning working on this a little bit more I do have all my landscape timbers now uh, screwed down to the to the trailer frame. Some are screwed up from the bottom, some are screwed down to the top. Really had a hard time getting through this metal, old metal frame. And I have sitting right here a roll of one by one inch hardware cloth wire. And um, I'm going to now start laying that down here on the deck. So this wire is recommended by Justin Rhodes who has a popular channel here on YouTube. And uh, anyway, I'm gonna step up and get that, that uh, heavier duty wire that the chickens can poop through the floor so if you're uh, into chickens you already know all this okay so i started out uh using these little uh fence staples for my wire happen to have this and it's got staples in it and it's powered by air and so that's it. So this pile of two by six is behind me is some wood that I got from a customer and friend that I was talking to at our, at our restaurant and asking them if they had anything around. Just kind of asking people if they had something they'd like to get rid of on the side of the garage and sure enough they had a nice pile of these long two by sixes. I'm ripping these two by sixes down, these treated two by sixes. They came off an old deck. I'll end up with like a two by four and then a one by two. And so we're kind of ending, ending up with uh, the perfect pieces that we need. To make.
Okay, what are we doing? So um, we're going to do this um, trailer behind us. We're going to turn it into a chicken coop, and it's going to be rolling all around. So um, the question is, so we're going to like put wire, there's wire on it, and um, the chickens could poop on, in the wire. It could like have the poop on the grass instead of like bringing more hay in and taking it out. So, and we're not going to put a door on it. And we're like going to have a baby chick door. Like there is no going to be, there is going to be a door to go inside for me because I'm going to get the eggs out of it. And um, we're going to kind of have it super big, but we're going to have this good. We're going to have like the um, feeders on the side. We'll get them in. So. Let's watch how we do. Okay, so there's a wall. There's our next long wall, huh? Yep. How do we do that? Um, because we used the nail gun and we nailed them together with the nail gun. Be enough room for you to walk over here? Yes. So, where are we putting this? Okay, let's put a nail in oh. right there, girl. All right, guys. Well, we're back on the chicken coop project today. What what day are we working on? Sunday. Oh, it's a Sunday. Yep. And we've been running around. We got a set of nesting boxes picked up today from Lindsey's grandpa, which is really nice of him to let us have his old nesting boxes. They need some work, but they're gonna be fine for our purposes. And um, we've gotten a little further on the project. I got the roof rafters put on, but I might be moving them or adding a couple and uh, picked out some pieces of tin out of the field that we're laying around and we're going to put them on here and uh, we're getting to where this thing's going to start shaping up here pretty soon. We're going to try to show you some of the progress and uh, watch along. Watch along. Watch along. Follow along. Yeah, what are we going to call it? Hmm. <gasps> hmm. Daddy Daughter Day Chicken Coop? Daddy Daughter Day Chicken Coop. Okay. I'm thinking we might we might name this thing the Mega Shaw, and the reason we're going to call it the Mega Shaw is if you watch a lot of YouTube and chicken videos like I do, uh, you know Justin Rhodes has a coop called the Chick Shaw, and uh, this is kind of inspired by his designs. It is an eggmobile, which is another term for um, you know housing laying hens in a mobile coop, but one of the the main characteristics of this being the the mega shaw is that we do not want to go inside this coop and that's what I like about Justin Rhodes's coop is that um, it is used to house the chickens it's used to, for their nesting purposes but you know they live outside of it and the human beings do not go inside of it so that's what we're wanting to do with this one is make a large mobile coop that we don't have to go inside and a self-cleaning just like uh, the chick shaw is so that's the inspiration here and I hope you enjoy watching us build it
So we've got the nesting boxes put in. The floors of several of them need worked on and so I will be cutting some pieces of plywood or some tin or something to put in those floors. But uh, we did want to see where they're going to land so that we can start putting tin on the outside of this coop. And if we get a few pieces of tin on, it's going to start looking like, like something here. We still have the front and back walls to finish. There's a door to build and a platform for the food and water. So there's a lot yet to be done, but it's kind of fun to see the nesting boxes hanging inside of our mobile Mega Shaw chick coop, uh, chicken coop. So there we go. much because uh, we are like going to because we're trying to hurry up Don't blow. so is this how our project is going we have like this mic up here you probably can't see it but there you go and the camera is like going to have we'll get you some video all right You saw earlier we had the nest boxes in there and now we're starting to get some roof metal put on. The whole thing started out on a trailer frame that is definitely not square. I think one side of the frame is actually higher than the other and then I put on landscaping timbers which are not known to, for their straightness and trueness. A lot of them are twisted, this and that, and then I use scrap lumber that is all bent and old and falling apart. Some of it's rotten and twisted up. So trying to get things squared up and straightened is, uh, you know, really not a main priority, but we're trying to get it kind of close. So we've been fiddling with that. And uh, it's starting to come together. In this shop where we're looking at trusses up behind the chicken coop and then we're, we're looking at the coop itself, it's gonna be a little tougher to distinguish what's what for the camera probably. But um, I've got three pieces of roof metal put on and getting ready to cut a couple more. And so I think it'll be like three cuts and I'll have all my roof metal ready. All right, looking more like a coop. Got the roof metal all the way on. Got a piece of side metal on. And if you see that little notch out down there, that's for the egg box collection area that's on the outside of this coop. And we have some special uh, design features that I think you'll find interesting on this oddball funky shape thing I'm doing. So anyway, um, I might pan down and show you that real quick. What are you trying to tell me? Um, how much eggs we got from the babies? How many? 21! 21 eggs? Yes. From just the baby chickens? Yes. Wow! Yep, 21. Let me count again. More. Oh, I had to take them out. Yeah, uh, don't worry about it. That's close enough. Don't take them out. I'll count them when I'm putting them into the box. Okay. Okay. Hey, I want you to show them something real quick on our chicken coop. Yeah. That's gonna make you a little deck to stand on, and you can climb up and get the eggs. Oh, can you get some stairs to set? Maybe we'll find some stairs. All right, guys, as we continue to do, we're just grabbing things out of the yard that are laying around that is uh, old junk stuff that hasn't been used. So, window or not, these uh, ventilation areas are wooden lattice that's pretty much junk, but anyway, we're gonna use it, and we might put some hardware cloth over, over the top or chicken wire over the top but if it needs to come off and be put back with something better, we can do that later. But uh, as you see, plenty of ventilation. We got some predator protection there. And um, anyway, as usual, just slapping it together as we go.
See if you can figure it out. Okay. Is it on? Let me see. Um, Daddy. Watch me. Let me see. Uh, I yep, it's on. My, I put it right on. So I think um, you hold it. So I think um, you hold this latch and lift under to look at the small. And I'm going to figure out the way how to do on the top. Maybe you does. You have this hook. It, this hook hooks onto that. I can't really get it. Or that. And you hold up that and you look inside. I thought that hooked onto the hook in. So that is how a you do it. Or you can make a hanger for a bucket to hang. That would be good. That would be good. So the sidewalls, I'm running the metal uh, horizontally, long ways, across those studs and they're on two foot centers and then on the ends i'm doing uh, pole barn style so the um the metal will run vertically on that on the ends which hey what the heck it doesn't really matter um but i think that'll be the simplest way to do it to tie in the front and the back end and i need to make a door which i don't know that's going to be simple but we've got the chicken door built and i can show you that i did it last night it's the same technique i used in one of my other videos on the um what was that one called, Joella? The cutting board chicken door video. And anyway, so I've already shown you that before. I didn't decide to video that. And this time it's a piece of plywood, but it's the same technique. So anyway, let's go look at it. And this is how it's going to work. So it's like flying up and down. It won't go all the way out, just half. It's all the way to the floor. Hey girls, there's going to be lots of little pieces of metal in here, so if Joella could come try to get them, that'd be good, but otherwise be careful when you're walking around with bare feet. Alright guys, so uh, this morning I was out here working on our chicken coop, as you've been watching along. And I'm so proud of myself all the time for using up all this uh, free, uh, you know, scrap wood and reused wood and stuff that we took apart when we first moved here. There was decks and, and uh, stairways and different stuff made out of treated lumber that was old and needed torn down. But we're reusing it for these chicken coop uh, projects. Anyway, uh, one thing you've got to be super careful about, and I was not super careful about, is the... Uh, 
you know, screws sticking out of this old wood or nails sticking out of it. And I've been walking over a pile of scrap lumber here for the last few days working on this uh, chicken coop. But this morning, I did not walk over the nail. I sunk my foot deep, deep into the into a screw. And uh, so anyway, I am hobbling around right now. But just remember, that's like so stupid to uh, think that you're going to get away with that. And uh, I've been walking over it, walking over it well this morning as I was setting one of the pieces of tin on the on the back here. I wasn't paying attention to my feet and just put most all my body weight right down on that through the marshmallowy, dreamy softness of a croc sandal, which stopped nothing. <laughs> and, uh, and that screw sunk deep into my foot. So anyway, uh, I'm still trying to hobble around and work on it, but the pain high, the pain amount is high tonight on that. And so um, anyway, here we are. We're just gonna keep on taking away at it and hopefully get this project out of the garage and get everything cleaned up. And that's uh, one of the problems here is that uh, we are excited about this chicken coop, but it is a big undertaking and it's taking up a lot of room and space in the garage. So we need to get this done and over with. Get it on the back out the door. guys got some more video that we're adding in on our mobile chicken coop the chick shaw mega shaw now we're working on the front end of this deal and gonna show you how we're gonna try to mount our food and water tank our water tank and food box which I need to build and uh, carry that on the front of the chicken coop as we go around so it's all one self-contained deal so anyway we're gonna keep on going get this thing done Get it out of the garage, right? Yeah. All right, guys, we're moved around to the back of the chicken coop now. We've got some more progress on the front, but it's not completely dialed in. I am right now installing perches in here, and these are gonna be running crossways to the trailer. They're uh, two befores, I'm just gonna set up on edge and screw to the, to the stud walls. So, so we're just setting them a little bit up off the floor of the wire floor of this coop so that if a predator did get in and around and, and was trying to reach in through the wire floor that they would be well above how a raccoon could reach through these one by one uh, wire mesh uh, openings here in the floor. So 
We don't expect that to be a problem because of the electric fencing around the, the coop itself, but you never know. So we're just being safe and putting these perches up um, a little bit off the floor, but not real high up in here so that a person could still kind of get through here to grab maybe a sick chicken or um, you know some certain situation where you're gonna have to get inside of here. But we really aren't setting this up to where you're in and out uh, with your, yourself in and out of this, this coop very often. So hopefully, the most I'm crawling around here today is, is the last I'll have to do for a long time. That's the idea anyway. Hey, how'd you get in there? I opened the door and stuff. Oh, do you need to show them how you do the door? Sure. Okay, so um, we have this orange latch Dad hooked on without me. So um, there's this screw, so you just had to put it on there. What's that do? It helps keep the door open if you want it open. Nice. So these these are our perches we're using. So um, they're kind of low, but they can jump down because they're going to be little and big. So put them all together in this coop. And what's that orange string do? Oh, that's hooked to the chicken door, isn't it? So the door's up right now. Yeah. So um, this is our chicken door latch. So um, we just tied this um, rope onto this circle thing. And we have this hook. So we just pull it down and up. And this will hook onto there. And this keeps it in place. That keeps it rolling up and down. Nice. I'm going to zoom in. One. So we have a hinge up there. Mm -hmm. And then it comes down. Boxes maybe. To that. And it comes all the way down. And I just put a ring. And it hooks onto that upside down hook. Put your bucket under there. Okay. Oh! I found a little secret. See if you can make it get feed out. Like that? Did you get feed? Yep. I got not a lot, but you need a lot in it. Yeah. Okay. Dad's got to work on that part. It's not working perfect yet. That chicken food's so good, the cat's eating it.
we are going to attempt to rearrange our fencing and move the chicken population over to the new coop this morning. We're going to try to get a little bit of video of it for you and see how it goes. Ready to rock? Yeah. Alright. Oh, are you coming too? Yeah, I just moved. Oh, there's another one. We got another helper. We're going to see if these helpers can come help. Where's that big spot? Are you ready? Okay, here we go. So one of the problems with having these different ages of birds is that we're, you know, needing to manage them in different ways because of their ages, and they're not all going to get along until they get bigger and closer in size. So that's one of the downfalls of the way I went about it this year, and probably next year once I've bought my main batch, I will not be adding more and adding more, you know, a month and a half, two months later, uh, because then we're going to end up with things like this you got going on here, uh, trying to deal with baby birds or smaller birds um, watch that rooster there you go give him a kick keep him back good job Joella anyway uh, you know we're just dealing with these things and it's just part of learning this chicken process but one big batch that would be you know all the same age is probably simpler and uh, you know I don't really necessarily claim to do things simple so that's what we're dealing with here. Just wanted to share with you some thoughts and ideas. And uh, we're going to be retiring two coops today, putting one new one into service, simplifying, and uh, looking forward to less cleaning. Both of the coops we're leaving are easy clean because you just move them and you do no cleaning. So that's a big, that's a big factor in why why we're doing what we're doing here. So today we removed our new coop we made. We already got the chickens in the pen. And a couple of them are in the nesting boxes. So we can show you when we open them up. So uh, these are our nesting boxes. You can't see them because uh, here are the chickens. Look at that. There is one trying to get in two. So there's one chicken in there. Two. Yep, they've only been out here. They've only been around this coop for how long? Maybe 30 minutes? And so, um, now we're going to show you the top. Okay, the top. Um, the top. Um, it looks like there's none in the top row. So now we're we'll checking inside how much is in. Like, we'll count them how much is inside. Okay, here's yesterday's eggs, right? Ooh, look at that. Now we're going to see how these chickens grow. And our new coop we do. So, um, they jumped on the perches. Like a couple of right here. That's the boxes. Yeah, it's going good. So, I will walk around for a Dad had these woods for, like, not fall, and here we're, like, walking in here to test, so we don't fall, so there's wire on this floor, so they can, like, poop on the wire, and we just go down to the grass. 
Welcome to Andrew Berry Mucks. Welcome to YouTube.